Joining us now, Pulitzer Prize winning author and presidential historian Doris Kearns Goodwin. Doris, you have covered a number of presidents. You have written books about presidents, entire books. Have you ever seen anything like this? What do you liken it to? Your thoughts this morning, Doris? You know, I think what strikes me, Mika, is of course it's an historical moment. Um, we've never seen this before. It's a moment when the rule of law is on trial, when no man can be above the law. It's the truth that will be coming out. But what saddens me as an historian is I would love to try time travel back to other historic moments that moved us forward in time. I'd much rather be there on January 1st of 1863 yeah. when the Emancipation Proclamation was signed or be there when the troops were going in on June 6, 1944 to liberate France from the Nazi rule or to be there in August of 1965 when the Voting Rights Act was passed. Ever since the time when this election was not agreed to be lost by, by former President Trump. We've been in a defensive stature and we've been moving backward in time and we have so many fights we have to fight and so much of it is now connected with his legal problems. So Doris, what does it also speak, say to you about who we are as a country right now? Because as you sat down, we were talking about how this is, Donald Trump is now a criminal defendant, first of potentially more times, and yet he stands a one in two chance to be president. He is a real chance to win. And, and for some of this country, what he's going through is almost thrilling to them. How, how, and they believe every word he says. What does that say to you about who we are? I mean, I think it says that we've, we've lost a sense of a collective identity of who we are as a people. What values are we promoting? What values do we care about? Think about the people we want as our leaders and just look at that as a as sort of a template for President Trump. Humility, people who acknowledge errors and learn from their mistake. Empathy, people who understand other people's points of view. Resilience to come through adversity. Accountability, kindness, compassion, and ambition for something larger than themselves, not for themselves. Those are the leaders that have led us. And that means the citizens respect those kind of leaders. Only in the 1850s did we find a situation, really, where there was such polarization that truth was not... At Truth was in question. You read only your partisan paper. Everything fact was different if you were in the South or in the North. Your heroes in the South were different from the North. And look where that led us. So we've got to figure out a way to come back together again to understand what truth is, to understand what law is, to understand the kind of leaders we want that, that represent our values. It's character above all that we need right now in public life. So, Doris, we're going to be talking about your new book, which is entitled An Unfinished Love Story, A Personal History of the 1960s, all week long. Um, I know we're crushed a little bit because of the legal case that we're covering that is happening right now, which is so historic. But can you please tell us a little bit about the book, knowing that you'll be back all week? Not a question. I'd love to. I mean, the main thing is that my husband and I opened 300 boxes that he had saved that really are a time capsule of the 60s. He had not wanted to open them for so long because the 60s had ended so sadly with the deaths of Martin Luther King and his great friend Bobby Kennedy, riots in the streets and violence. Finally, when he turned 80, he said, it's time to do it. Let's get to them. And what we did is relive the 60s. And when you relive that decade from the beginning to the end, and Dick was everywhere. He was with Kennedy. He was with Johnson. He was with Senator McCarthy in New Hampshire. He was with Bobby when he died. He's sort of like a zealot. He's everywhere you want him to be in the 60s. You realize what was so extraordinary about the time, and it's so important for us to know now, it was a time when people believed they could make a difference. Think of it. They joined the Peace Corps by the thousands. They joined into sit-ins and, and freedom rides, marches against segregation, against the denial of votes. They joined in a women's movement, a gay rights movement. There was a sense that you could really change things by moving collectively. And it's what we need now from our young people. There's so much frustration, understandably. But unless they know that they can mobilize and act to protect the rights that are now, those very rights that were given in the 60s, won in the 60s by all that action, are now under threat again. And there's not going to be leaders that are necessarily going to lead them. They have to do it themselves. It's time for the citizens to make their way felt in terms of the right to choose, gun safety, climate change. And I'd like this book to be a reminder of them of what a generation feels like as the generation of the 60s did. I'm so glad I was living in that time when you felt you were really changing things and fulfilling yourself and being involved in something larger than yourself. Doris, it's been lovely. We've been looking at the lovely pictures of you and Dick together. Um, and it must have been fun to go and spend that time back in that period of history, both in your personal life, but also in, in the upheaval of that time. You know, sometimes people talk at the moment and say, well, does this compare to, you know, the most violent times in American history where the country is so divided at the moment and there's so much talk of political violence around America? But then actually, when you look back at 68, 
it was all it was more tumultuous and more we had you know troops in college campuses um places were on fire around the country I mean, in some ways you're right it was a time of engagement but it was also a time of extreme tension in america it, this isn't the first time in recent history that we're looking at that I think you're so right. I mean, that's what's important. And that's why history, I think, can give us solace and give us lessons and perspective. Because it did seem in 1968 that the country was falling apart in the seams. Old people seemed different from young people. People in the country felt different from people in the city. Um, there was an enormous sense of, of unsettlement with all those riots in the summers. And you're right, the violence on campuses. And somehow we came through it. You know, that's the important thing to remember. All those tough times in our history, whether it was the Great Depression or the Civil War or the early days of World War II, the people living then didn't know how it was going to end. We, we know now that the Allies won World War II. We know that the emancipation and, and the Union was secured by the Civil War. They didn't know that in the late 60s. But still, we have to balance that. A lot of tough times, great things happen. Look what happened with Bull Connor and the dogs that were set upon the civil mm -hmm. rights marchers in 63, or at Selma, what happened at the bridge. And yet the conscience of the country was fired in those moments. And that's when change takes place, when the outside movement meets the panel, the channel of power inside. And that's, that's when justice happens. That's when freedom happens. That's when equality comes. And the 60s is noted for that, as well as the sadness. Fate intervened with these assassinations. But what happened during most of that time was a movement forward toward freedom and justice. And that's why I'm so glad to be reliving it again. I was young again. Dick was young again. He was alive again. He died before we finished this project. So I wasn't sure I could finish it, but I had made him a promise that I would. And by doing it, I became not only a biographer of him, but more importantly, I think, an historian myself and my own experiences in it. But I interviewed a whole bunch of people who were there. And it's a generation that's fading in time. So to get their stories and get an understanding of what that decade is one of our most pivotal decades was like really was a great tribute for not only my husband for me as an historian as well or doris kearns goodwin thank you so much the new book is titled an unfinished love story a personal history of the 1960s it goes on sale tomorrow and doris will be back with us throughout the week with much more on this congratulations once thank again you, Nika. doris all right take care you're amazing hey everyone msnbc has a new and improved app you'll get real-time alerts and analysis live blogs in-depth essays video highlights and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the app store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.